All right. I'll get started here with a word of prayer. You guys ready? Dearly Father, we uh, thank you for this day again. I thank you for these students and for the rain and just for your many blessings to us. Help us to glorify you what we do and just to learn a little bit more about math together, Lord. And I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right, so uh, let's take a stab at one of these problems here. We're in section 1.6, give or take. This is radical equations. So um, the goal pretty much always is to undo the radicals. All right, so like if you've got a square root, if you can square it, it goes away. If you've got a cube root, you can cube it to make it go away. If you've got a fourth root, you can raise both sides to the fourth power to make it go away. Um, so you kind of have to choose the right operation for the, the enemy you're up against, right? So let's look at something We'll start with something actually relatively simple that looks kind of scary, which is the fourth root of x squared plus 2x equals to the fourth root of 3. How do you solve such a problem? So. Remember, <clears throat> this is actually 3 to the 1 4th power, right? So if we raise both sides to the 4th power, then <clears throat> things will work out for us. So we raise that to the 4th power, and raise that to the 4th power. That gives us x squared plus 2x equals to 3 also known as x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals to 0, which we can factor, I think, x plus 3 times what? x minus 1. Cool. And um, so what are my solutions there? x equals minus 3 or x equals to 1. Um, Okay, good. Now, <clears throat> the question is, I think those are both going to work. We can check them somewhat quickly. If we think about plugging minus 3 into here, we get 9. Um, 9 minus 6. 9 minus 6 is 3. So 4 through to 3 equals 4 through to 3. Good, it checks. If we plug 1 in, that also gives us 3 inside the, 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 the fourth root here. So both of these work. They're both solutions. There you go. Any questions so far? Do we have, so like after we get x equals minus 3 and x equals 1, do we have to go back and check it? It kind of depends on the problem. A problem like this, it turns out no. But there's other ones where, yeah, we do need to check it. Do you want us to show ourselves checking it? Um, no, I pretty much just take points off when you say something's a solution that's not a solution. That, that suffices for me to kind of check that box in your understanding. So like. It just takes care of itself because, for, let me just work one where that's an, that, that is an issue. Like um, example two, something like, um, oh, I don't know, um, square root of x plus 5, all right, um, close the square root, plus 2 equals to the square root of x minus 1. So this, this here from the book is uh, number 56, actually. if you're keeping score. And so how do you solve a problem like this? What's that? Square both sides? Square both sides sounds like a plan. I mean, we've already got we've already got a radical isolated, right? And there's nothing particularly prettier or, or you know, they're they're both kind of about the same amount of evil. So you might as well just kind of like you said square both sides, why not? If we do that, that gives us the square root of x plus 5, quantity squared, right? Plus 4 times the square root of x plus 5, plus 4, foiling this out. And that's equal to x minus 1. Now let me just clean that up a bit. That's x plus 5 plus 4 times the square root of x plus 5 plus 4 
equals to x minus 1. So what do you guys think about anything nice happened there? What, why would you expand it out like that? Once you square the square root, doesn't that cancel it out? Well, yeah, I'm just showing my steps. Well, the generic pattern I'm up against here is if I take, if I have a plus b and I square it, right? Mm -hmm. I know that that is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That's like a standard form. I keep that ready to use. So here's my a squared, here's my 2ab, because 2 times 2 is 4. My a is root 5, a squared of x plus 5, my b again is 2, and b squared is 4. So it's just that pattern. Whenever I foil out a square, I use this, this, this pattern. Whenever I multiply out a square, I use it. Is that, are you just wondering why I wrote this line? I just, in my brain, once you square it, it would get rid of the cube, I meant the square root, so I just have x plus 5 plus 2 equals x minus 1. Oh, I see. I meant x plus 5 <coughs> plus 2 equals x minus 1. But that is not true because when we multiply this out, right? So I know what you're saying, and that is a very popular mistake, like very popular. Um, maybe the most popular mistake in this material is just when you square a sum, you just square it and ignore the middle term. But there's a middle term, see? Because we have x plus 5 squared, and then this times this gives me 2 squared of x plus 5, and then this times this gives me plus 2 squared of x plus 5, and then this times that gives me plus 4. I mean, this is the first outer, inner, last, whatever, however you want to organize it. There are four terms there, but two of them are the same, so you group them. You're all good. Oh, you got it. So, you know, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> that's why I wrote down what I did. Now, of course, notice that we can cancel some things, right? Like this here and that there, those are the same thing, right? So isolate the radical again, what do we got? We have a 4 square root of x plus 5 equals to what? Minus 1. Well, I'm going to put all of them all over on the other side. So these guys canceled. This is 5 plus 4, which is 9. So minus 1 minus 9 is minus 10, right? So apparently, 4 times the square root of x plus 5 is equal to minus 10. See, I'm not sure I believe that. Yeah, but I had to move it to the other side. I'm moving it to the other side. Oh, okay, okay. Now, at this point, I know that it's not going to work. Where did the minus 1 come from? Hmm? Where did the minus 1 come from? It was oh, in... Oh, I see, I see it. Okay, sorry. So, look, I mean, I'm up against the square root of x plus 5 is equal to minus 10 over 4, right? I can stop right there. I don't need to go any further. There's no solution. Right? Do you see that? Because I can't have the square root. Remember the square root is what? Non-negative. Can I have square root of something be minus 10 fourths? Impossible, right? Well, let's see what, let's see, just let me just go on. Ignoring that, ignoring the fact there's no solution. If I take this and square it, what do I get? I get x plus 5 is equal to 100 over uh, 16, yeah? So that gives me x is equal to, you know, whatever that, what's 100 over 16? I don't know. 25 over 4? Minus. <laughs> it, it's, you say 6.25? Yeah. So 6.25 minus 5 is, of course, 1.25, right? And so there, there you have it, 1.25. But the thing is, the square root, 
the square root of, you know, 1.25 plus 6 point, 1.25 plus is 6.25. And that is actually 1.25. Which of course is not equal to minus 1.25. I'm, I'm sorry, that, the square root of 6.25 is actually what? 2.5, right? See, the 10 fourths is 2.5. Anyway, my point to you is that once you get that square root as a negative, you know, game over, there's no solution. When you square the equation, you're going to create the appearance of a solution. Because what? What are you doing when you square the equation? You're erasing the minus. Right? Squaring erases the minus and it changes it to a problem which actually does have a solution, namely this one, which we found 1.25 for x. But that is, of course, not a legit solution. That is extraneous. And by the way, I made a mistake last class. Was it last class? What's today? Oh yeah, so it was, it was Friday that I made the, it. was CFAW. See if I had, I, I got the extraneous solution. That, that was a mistake. I actually made a mistake in class which made it extra, like, that, there was a mistake in that example. It wasn't actually, I forget exactly what the story was, but that, there was a mistake in that example that led me to say it was extraneous, which was, I mean, it was useful for the sake of showmanship to the CFAW, but, that, you know, it was uh, incorrect. <laughs> there was an error there. One of you pointed it out after class to me. It was you. Yeah. yeah. No? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, okay, so um, let's move on here. Example three. Unless there's a question about this one. So the answer, to summarize in example two, the answer was no solution. No solution. <sighs> let's see here. So. To answer your question, the way I get you is if you didn't check things, you might just go through your merry way and write down solution 1.25, right? Yeah. Which is worth partial credit, right? Because your heart's in the right place. You just need to be careful about going back. Um, let's see here. Do, do, do. Example three. Let's try our hand at the square root of um, 3x minus the square root of 5x uh, plus 1 equals to minus 1. There we go. Can we solve this? No. <laughs> no? Why not? I mean, it could be that this one is bigger than that one, so it gives us a net negative. You know, it's not just one radical equal to a negative number. So what I would do with this kind of problem is I pick the biggest, ugliest radical and I isolate it. All right? It's kind of like, uh, you know, if you're, in a, if you're in an alley and you're approached by a gang of thugs, you want to attack the biggest one and go for the eyes, right? You need to show the rest of them that you're crazy enough that they don't want to fight you. So you have to, like, hurt the biggest one. That's... Sure. She's a student of the Krav Maga. Let's see here. So the square root of 5x plus 1. Um, so I, I, I isolate that. To do that, I add it to the other side, and then I add 1 to the, this side. Right? So this. So first of all, you guys need to convince yourself that I'm right or wrong. Am I right or wrong? The equation I wrote down. But math is, math is done by consensus. There's no consensus. I don't know what to do. I need to call an expert. Listen, so what I did here, what I did here, if you guys want, is we could do this. 3x is minus 1 plus the square root of 5x plus 1, right? And then add 1 to both sides. Right? And then finally, after all of that, flip a -roo over to here. The left is right, the right is left, all right? 
however you want. Anyway, however you want to see it, there it is. Now, <clears throat> now that we have isolated the ugliest radical among them, now we do what we always do. If it's a square root, square both sides, right? And on the one side, we get 5x plus 1, right? And on the other side, we get the square root of 3x squared plus 2 times the square root of 3x plus 1. Again, using the, when we square things, we do a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That's the pattern, right? Now, let's clean this up. This is 5x plus 1 is 3x plus 2 times 3x, r radical 3x, plus 1. Um, Ooh, well, let's isolate the radical. So if I subtract 3x to the other, oh, the 1's cancel. That's nice, right? There's something. See that? These guys, they're gone. <laughs> That's right. And so, count your blessings. 2x is equal to 2 times the square root of 3x. Don't question why I write two different ways in the same equation. There's no reason for it. Maybe it was just so I could ask that question. Divide I don't know. By two. Oh, divide by two. Are you sure? Never mind. Don't divide by two. No, that was a yes. Divide by two. You should have more faith in yourself. I see here. So the square root of three x. <coughs> yep, dividing by two, and then what? Square both sides. Square both sides. I like that. So we get x squared is equal to three x which then we will factor after we move things to one side and do like so. So I find either x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 3. Those are potential solutions because they may or may not actually solve the original problem because we have squared it and then we have squared it again. You know, and when we do that, we may be injecting solutions which are not actually there for our problem but they're for a problem which is related by like multiplication by a negative. Anyway, so plug zero back in, does it work? Square root of zero minus the square root of um, zero plus one, yeah. So that's equal to zero minus one, also known as minus one, check. So I plug it in, it worked, yay. So you say it's, you say it's square root of nine minus what? square root of 16, yeah, which is what? 3 minus 4. Hey, look, they both work this time. Isn't that annoying? So you can't, <laughs> with these problems, it is sometimes the case that both of your potential solutions fail. It is sometimes the case that both of your potential solutions are actually honest-to-goodness solutions. It is sometimes the case that, that only one of them works. Like, all of these things are possible. You just have to work it out and check. Any questions? Comments? Concerns? All right, let's, let's see what we got here. Um, let me work one that's a little bit different. So next up on the docket, example four. Let's take a stab at this one. Oh, ugly. Three minus the square root of x I wouldn't even try this with the other section. I just do it for you guys. Yeah. I mean, it's actually, the other section I tried a problem that was really ugly. I'm just not going to do it to you guys because I already know it's ugly. Like, we worked problem, what was it? I, mean, I think it was 64. Might have been 60. I think we worked 64 in the other section. It just, it's just ugly. One of the answers is like minus 2 ninths. Ugh. Then you got to plug it in to check it, which is just unpleasant. You guys, let's see here. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, look, the ice, the uh, the ugly radical is already isolated, right? You're like you're so judgmental. I was talking about how ugly certain radicals are. You know, it's true. I am. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we can all agree this is ugly, right? So, we square that. We square this. What happens? 
On the, on the left hand side we get ourselves a 9 minus 6 times the square root of x plus x. On the other side we get 2 times the square root of x minus 3. Now what? Square it again. Well, I think first we better, uh, we better collect our radicals, right? Like, let's put them all together. So um, I'll add 3 to both sides. I get, I get 12 plus x is equal to 8 root x. Do you guys feel better about that? I, I often, the thing that bothers you guys the most with my algebra, my ways, is I have a habit of simplifying things and then flipping them in my head, at which point I have lost all of you. Well, not all of you, but many of you. Like, I, I do this a lot. Because I just like the ugly thing to be on the left as a matter of, like, prettiness. And if, I don't know. So I didn't do it. You happy? I didn't do it. I left, I left the ugly thing on the right, right? No, can see? What? Can't see it? No, I can see it. I'm going to have to remove that table. Why? It leads to, I don't know, something. <laughs> I can assign seating if I want. What? <laughs> Your partner team? I think that, seem, that seems somewhat redundant. See, but if I relegate you to these seats, there's no way that anybody can sit in anybody else's lap. Like, it's just not possible, right? Okay, we'll stop <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I'd like, well, yeah. All right, so, <clears throat> actually, I should, I should assign some class the task of just breaking all these chairs so that they don't come back for the next, no, I didn't say it. We shouldn't try to destroy the chairs out of spite or anything. But some of these, some of these desks are really, I don't know. Anyway, um, it does. It, this this part of Demos feels somehow like a lower class citizen or something. Like it's <laughs> not the same as like the fourth floor. The fourth floor is all like posh and. Have you seen the interior design lab upstairs? Yes. Good grief! Like there's like, it's like gold plated wall sockets and stuff in there. Probably I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I just want some like nice long tables for you guys to work at with like seats and stuff. Other professors where students cheat if you do that, but eh, eh, whatever. Um, <clears throat> you guys wouldn't cheat. I know it. Okay, so if we square both sides here, then we can get rid of the radical, right? All right, so square both sides. What happens? We get a 144 plus 24x plus x squared is equal to, now this, be careful, this is 8 squared times the square root of x squared, right? So that gives you actually 64x. 64x is what you're up against. Now, let's move everything together. We got ourselves an x squared minus 40x um, plus 144 equals to 0. I don't believe I've ever done this factoring problem before, but it looks fun. 144 is an interesting number. It's got so many factors. You know, 12 and 12 and 4. 12 and 12, but 12 and 12 don't sum to 40. Yeah, um, 144 divided by 6. 6 and 24, that doesn't help. I don't know. 36 and 4. I add some minuses, but yes. There you go. 4 times 30 is 120. 120 plus 24 is 144. So, yep. Way to go. That's right. That. And so our solutions, potentially, are what? <laughs> what, what see, this. <sighs> what is this stupidity? All right. Anyway, x equals to 4. I feel like I'm in like a furniture warehouse or something in here. x equals to 4 or x equals to 36. Do either of these work? So like 3 minus the square root of 4, is it equal to, question mark, the square root of 2 times the square root of 4 minus 3. Is that true? I don't know. Um, well, this, this is 1. Why am I so close to this? And this, 2 times 2, 4 minus 3, square root of 1, 
equal to 1. Hooray, it works. Um, how about the 36? 3 minus the square root of 36 is 3 minus 6, which is minus 3. And that is not equal to whatever's on the other side. Because you can't get minus 3 is the square root of 2 times the square root of 36 minus 3. Like, that's just not the case. So as we see, because that's negative 3 can't be equal to the positive square root of something, right? So that's out. We only get this. This guy is extraneous. All right. One more, one more problem, and then I'll let you guys take the quiz. Let's see here. <coughs> so I like, I think we, we worked some problems like this last time, but um, I don't think we worked anything quite like this one. So example, Thank you. Example five, we have x minus three to the two fifths equals to four x to the one fifth. So like last time I had one where we just took the we just raised the uh, equation to the reciprocal power to make it nice, right? Mm -hmm. This one, I've got different powers, right? So I can't just like, if I raise, the, raise it to the fifth power, I get rid of the one fifth. But if I raise it to the five halves power, I don't. What should I do? I mean, what should I do? Well, I would raise both sides to the fifth power because it makes both fractions behave. So like, remember the laws of exponents, we multiply the fractions, so we get x minus 3 squared equals to 4x. So basically I'm going off the fact that 2 fifths times 5 is 2, but 1 fifth times 5 is 1. All right. So that's what to do, is like basically pick a power that will make all of your fractions become integers, then you, then you can solve it, right? So this is x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals to 4x, which becomes x squared minus 10x plus 9 equals to 0, which you guys can factor, I think. x minus 9, x minus 1. Man, I, you know, this book is it's kind of... It's 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 making me it's making me look bad. It, it makes you it makes me feel like there's no completing the square ever, right? Because they have engineered all of these problems so that the factoring is always easy, right? But this is totally artificial. This is just the book. <laughs> yes. Well, but the bad news is I make up problems for the test. I don't just copy them out of the book. So x equals to nine or x equals to one. And if you plug those in, um, I think they're both going to work. Let, like, let's look at x equals to 1. What happens there? We get 1 minus 3 to the 2 fifths power. How do, you, how do you calculate that? The way to calculate that is minus 2 squared to the 1 fifth power. What is minus 2 squared? Well, it's 4. So we get 4 to the 1 fifth power, which, by the way, is what you get when you plug 1 into the other side. So that worked. If I try my x equals to 9, I plug it in, I get 9 minus 3 to the 2 fifths power, which is actually 6 to the, to the 2 fifths power, right? Which is 30, which is, well, I can square it, right? 6 squared to the 1 fifth, which is also 36 to the 1 fifth power, which I think is what I get from the other side. If I put 4 times 6, I get, um, 4 times 9, rather, I get 36 to the 1 fifth power. So, hooray, they're both solutions. Yay. It seems like, generically speaking, when we don't have a sum of radicals, it's almost always the case that all of the solutions are solutions. Modulo some kind of stupid minus thing. But anyway, 
let you guys get started on the quiz. <coughs> There you go. Now, we can use our notes, right? you can use your notes. That is true. Go ahead and start working. Well, I got one left. Yeah. Are you sick? Uh huh. Oh. Is it back too? Yep. Front and back. You just made my head. You're welcome. Fake it till you make it. What they say. Somebody says that. I don't know. <coughs> do 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 So like I was saying before, all the old quizzes and tests and homework that I've graded and haven't returned, they're all in the drop box outside my office. If you want it, you can get it. Ay, ay, ay.
You gotta go. What? You need to go. Okay. Am I able to? Yeah, you're okay. You go. Can I get this view or do you get this? No, you keep it. No, you, you, you keep it. Yeah. Oh, don't leave yet. We're not done. 
Uh, I have an excuse for the next day. Should I just put an X? No, it's fine. no. Don't worry about it. Just yeah, just leave. It's fine. So guys, <clears throat> I'm not collecting these quizzes, nor am I grading them. If you're here and you take the quiz, you get full credit. What we're going to do now is to look at the solution. Mr. What is that? Is that okay? Yeah. All right. All right. I was I was concerned there was too much stress in this course, so I decided to reduce the amount of stress. Now, this will continue to happen in as much as I feel like you guys are actually trying on the quiz. If you stop trying on the quiz when I hand it out, then I will bring, bring back the graded quizzes and then, well, I'll bring them back. So let's, um, you know, but I, I still want you guys to have a chance to have some amount of time pressure to try to work some problems out on your own and to see if you're right or wrong, right? So let's do it. Problem number one, did you guys get this? Again, I'm not collecting these. All right, I'm not collecting the quiz. You hold on to it. <clears throat> I'm scoring you according to whether or not you've signed the attendance sheet. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> now, <coughs> so here, any of these kind of problems, like factoring is so much of it. So what I did was I factored, um, well, I didn't factor yet, I guess. I, I made this the same. So like, this is missing an x minus 3. So I multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3 so that they both have a common denominator of x squared minus 9. Um, and then I can combine and get that. Now, somebody asked me in the other section, does it really matter? It doesn't really matter which one, this one or that one, they're both correct? Like, yeah, they're both fine. I don't think you can really argue one is more, you know, simple than the other. Are we good? Yeah. All right, let's go on. <clears throat> so problem two, pretty simple. We just multiply by x squared over x squared. And by doing that, we clear out the fractions, change from being a, a compound fraction to being just a single fraction. And, and there it is. That's, that's his, we can't do anything more. That's, that's it. Problem three is more exciting because, and by the way, I have posted this solution in Canvas module six, like under quiz four, it's there for you to look at later. You don't have to hurry and write this down or anything. If you don't want to, you can just, wh whatever's best for you. This is posted in Canvas, so you can look at the solution at your leisure. Um, this factors, and so does that. And the cool thing is, once it does, well, these cancel, those cancel, these cancel, everything cancels. It just leaves us with a number one. So, yeah. Sure. Any questions? Has the attendance sheet got to everybody? Cool. <laughs> you just you just foiled everything out. See that won't do it because you won't be able to if you just multiply these out. You, well, did you, could, could you still see that it was the same thing top and bottom, so you canceled it? Oh, great. Yeah, that, that, hey, that's a legitimate way. Sure. I just think that, the, yeah, it, either, that's also fine. I would just caution that when you multiply things out, like a lot of people are more likely to make a mistake doing that and not see it to the end. I mean, but yeah, I mean, I'm not saying this is the only way to do the algebra, by no means. So problem four is not a book problem. This is one I made up, which means completing the square might happen. Indeed it did. I cross multiply, I multiply it out, I collect terms, I get a quadratic x squared minus 10x minus 4. This does not factor nicely, so I have to complete the square, and when I do that, I get my x equals 5 plus or minus root 29 solutions. Now, of course, I didn't say you have to complete the square here. You don't have to complete the square on this problem on the test. If you can use the quadratic formula and use it correctly to give me these answers, 
And when I say use the quadratic formula correctly, I mean if you, use, if you choose to use the quadratic formula, then it is your responsibility to simplify the answer from the quadratic formula. I do want the answer to be at least somewhat nice and tidy. Like leaving me the quadratic formula unsimplified full of numbers that haven't been calculated, that's not going to work. All right. I mean, it'll get you partial credit, but I'm going to take something off. Any questions about this one? And then the last problem, last but not least here, we have a number line inequality type problem. You look at it, your critical numbers are minus 2, minus 1 from that one, a 3, a 5, and an 8. I put them in order here. Um, I probably put in a big number like 10. You can see it's positive if you do that. And so it starts me out with plus, and then I use the sine flip theorem. So I flip the sine at 8 because that's got a multiplicity 3. And then I, I stayed negative at 5. I didn't flip at 5 because that's from this multiplicity 2 factor right here. And then I flipped at 3 because that's coming from this. And I flipped at minus 1 because it's coming from that. And I flipped at minus 2 because it's coming from that. And then look at this. So I would include minus 1 and minus 2 in the solution set because that gives me 0 in the numerator. As you can see, I included minus 1 and minus 2 here. I have excluded 3, 5, and 8 whenever they came up because that would give me division by 0. As you can, three, as you can see, 3 is excluded, 5 is excluded, 8 is excluded. The rest of it is I'm looking for minuses because I'm trying to solve less than 0. And that's it. That's, that's how you do it, right? So anyway, I hope that helps you prepare a little bit for the test, which is coming up eventually. And we're not there yet, so if you don't get it yet, it's OK.